Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, July 18th, and I am up very early. It is probably about 6.15ish in the morning, and I'm getting ready to go to a diversity uh, day-long conference near my home, and then I'm going to be meeting some special people later on today. And over the past year, a lot of you have asked me to do like a makeup tutorial and I use the word tutorial very lightly. So I figured I would just do a, a quick get ready with me and include the I teach two tag all in the same process throughout today's vlog. So I'm going to do my makeup right now and answer questions step by step. So what you can see so far is I've already put on the outline of my brows because I didn't want to startle you guys too much. I mean, I already have no makeup on and me without an outline of a brow is very frightening. So if you look very closely, I've put my brows on, but I haven't filled them in and I will show you in just a second what I use and then we'll go from there. Okay, as I do my brows, I'm going to be answering the first question, and the first question on the I Teach Two tag is what do you teach and where? So before I answer that question, there are three things that I use for my brow. I use this eyebrow pencil from MAC. This is the, I forget what the name of this pencil is, but it's the really thin pencil in the color Spiked. I use this eyeshadow to fill in and this color is called Corduroy and I always get these for free because I recycle all of my MAC products and I just go to a MAC store to get the eyeshadows for free and then I use this angled brush and I will try very hard to be diligent and link all these things in the description box below. So as far as what do I teach and where the questions are taped to the mirror that's why I'm looking that way. I teach I will be teaching third grade in Southern California. Now those of you that follow my channel know that I just recently did the teaching tax. Some of these questions will be redundant. So I teach third grade in Southern California. Uh, up until this, up until now I've taught fifth grade for uh, I think seven or eight years. I really honestly don't know for sure, but that was the bulk of the time that I spent teaching was in fifth grade. But I will be moving to third grade this upcoming school year. The second question is, how long have I been teaching? This school year will be my 12th year teaching. And that's it, I don't really have much student teaching experience prior to that, so this will be my 12th year teaching. Now before I go on to the next part of my brows, I have filled them in, and what I try to do, and you'll see me putting my glasses on and off because I can't see without them, so I can't read the questions that are on the mirror, is I fill them in, um, in the middle there, and when I draw on the brow, this is really what I have to draw on the most. I literally have no tail to my brow, so I draw that in. So once I draw them in, I will put on or use this Pro, Pro Long Wear Waterproof Brow Set from MAC. And I will just fill in the brows and then I will brush them. I'm going to leave my glasses on for a minute. So the next question is, did I always know I wanted to teach? And the answer to that question is no. I did not know that I always wanted to teach. As I said in the, I'm gonna have to take my glasses off actually. In the teaching tag video, when I was younger, I thought I was going to be a corporate lawyer when I grew up because that is what Claire Huxtable was on the Cosby Show and whatever Claire Huxtable did, I wanted to do. Not to mention, I think I would have been really good at um, law. I have been told by several people that I'm a very verbal person, which I don't disagree with. And I'm really good in debate situations. Like if I have a point to prove and I want to pull, prove it, I can be a little stubborn about pressing on. So what you notice is I put my brows on, I put the gel on, and then I just use my eyebrow brush to kind of smooth them down. My goal when I am putting on my eyebrows is, where's my pencil? I'll just use this, is to always make sure that the front of my brow hits at the same point where my tear duct is, the arch of my brow hits kind of like right there, and the tail of the brow hits the very end of my eye. And these are all things that I've just learned by watching other people on YouTube and um, getting my makeup done by professionals. Okay, my brows are done, and so I'm doing the next step, which is I put concealer underneath my eyes and I put them around my brows to kind of define them. And I use this Pro Long Wear Concealer from MAC, and I just put two pumps on the back of my hand like that. I put it away, and then I use this brush right here to kind of do what I need to do. So the next question is, um, what is it? The next question is, what is your typical outfit, teacher outfit of the day? I honestly, 
don't think that I have a typical teacher outfit of the day and I strive to not have a typical teacher outfit of the day, what I wear to work really depends on a few things. It will depend on the weather. And even though this is Southern California, we do have some variations in weather every now and then. So it will depend on the weather and typically by weather, is it gonna be extremely hot or is it going to be raining by chance? And it depends on my mood. So do I feel fat? Um, and I, am I in a good mood? It depends on what I'm gonna do that day. Like, do I have a meeting somewhere? Am I going on a field trip? Is it gonna be an exceptionally long day because there's a meeting after school? And then lastly, it depends on what have I worn previously. So before I get into all that, just to kind of show you what I'm doing, and it's not perfect. Like I'm putting it on top of my brow, underneath my brow, and I'm doing the same over here. And this for me is sometimes challenging because you know, I have poor eyesight, so I'm just kind of going off of what I can see with some compromised vision. But even though it's not perfect, I know that when I use a little blender, beauty blender, yeah, when I use a little beauty blender, it'll kind of make everything okay. So the first thing I do is I go underneath my brow and on top of the brow. And then I put some in the middle. This is something someone told me from a Mac consultation a couple years ago. And it's just to try and make the middle of my face just seem a little bit illuminated is what he said. And then I put it down the middle of my nose like this. And then I take some and I put it underneath my eye. And I'm just gonna say while I'm doing this, I'm not even sure how this video is going to turn out so there's a good chance that I'm doing all this and you'll never see it um, and if I do share it with you if it's totally unprofessional or hard to follow or not like other people that do makeup on YouTube my apologies but this is something I've wanted to do because a lot of you have asked like I said but I just am very self-conscious about doing it a because I'm not a makeup artist I don't even think I'm that great at makeup I just pay attention to what people are telling me and this is typically what I do every morning when I'm going to work in this order. The only thing that's different is I will normally have my hair still in my little bonnet cap that I sleep in, but I mean, I thought you guys deserved better than that. I don't wanna show you all that, but that's the only thing that's different. So I take the concealer, I define my brows with it, I put some in the middle of my forehead, and um, then I go down my nose, and then I go right underneath my eye, and I try and make this little triangle here, and put as much as I can. I actually wish I had a little bit more, but I'm not going to do that. And then I wipe the excess off my hand like that. And then I use this beauty blender that I moisten before I start and I just kind of blend it out. I did forget one thing though. Um, let's see. I use an eyeshadow primer at this point as well. And this is just a little stick from NYX. This literally cost me about two dollars and I put about eight strokes on each eye so the end result is me looking like this so outfit of the day so the first thing I do the first thing I probably think about is what have I worn so I know if you've watched my vlog since I started last year um, I know I've said that I really try to avoid repeating full outfits the entire school year. So the first thing I would think about is, okay, what is something that you haven't worn? The next thing I'll think about is, what is the weather going to be? So I always check my phone. If it's going to be really hot, like this time of year, I will always try and wear a dress because I don't like to wear shorts because I'm very self-conscious about my thick bottom half. Um, so I'll always opt for a dress if I can or a skirt. And if it's raining, I'm going to put on some leggings and some jeans if I can. And if it's just a nice day, it really just depends on what I feel like wearing. Then I think, what am I doing in the day? If I'm going to a meeting that's maybe at the district office, I will definitely try and dress a little bit dressier because I feel like you just always want to look your best at places like that because you never know who you're going to be running into. So I would be a little bit dressier. Um, and then if I'm not going anywhere special, if it's a long day, I'll try and make sure I'm dressed more comfortably. So I'll wear some flats for sure. I won't wear shoes that are a little uncomfortable for me. Um, and then my mood. If I feel fat, I need to put on something that's flowy, leggings preferably. And that's really it. I really try not to have a typical teacher outfit of the day. I don't ever want to get to the point where someone says, there's LaTanya in her teacher outfit. So um, that's it. 
It depends on the weather, my mood, where I'm going, what I'm doing, what I've worn previously, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so I have put on my brows, I've put primer on my eyelids for eyeshadow, I've put on concealer, and the next thing I'm going to do is put on my actual eyeshadow. And so to do that, I use a couple of brushes. I use this one, and this one, and this one. I'm a little rusty because I don't wear makeup if I don't have to during the summer, so I always have to remind myself. So I use this one first, and I'll link it in the description box. This one second, and this one third. And then I'm going to get the eyeshadow that I need. I use this shadow here. This is MAC, and I think this is called Hoodwinked. I'll double check. I think it's called Hoodwinked, and I use this to go over my whole eyelid. And let's continue with these questions. So the next question is, what do I bring for lunch? <laughs> Typically for lunch, on Sundays, I would go to Vons, which is a grocery store that is out here. And in their deli section, they sell a lot of different types of prepackaged salads. And I'm just wiping some eyeshadow off because I feel like there's too much on it. Different prepackaged salads. So on Sundays, I would go there, buy five salads to get me through the week if I needed that many. And then, whew, this feels like a lot. And um, that would be the main part of my lunch. In addition to the salad, I will have sliced apples with peanut butter. And I think that's it. That would be what I would have for lunch. In addition to the lunch, I would pack snacks. So for my morning snack, lately it was string cheese. And then an afternoon snack is usually something like a protein bar. And then of course I always have a bottle of water to take with me. So I'm going to finish doing my eyeshadow because these are all the questions that I intended to answer at this point. I think my plan is to answer these questions for you guys throughout the day. And this part went much faster than I thought. So I'm just gonna finish putting on my eyeshadow and then we'll see what happens after that. So I finished putting on my first bit of eyeshadow. This is the one that I put on my whole lid. Honestly, right now I feel like I put on too much but I'm going to try and work with that. I'm going to try and deal with it as I continue. So the first eyeshadow is I think called Hoodwink. I put that over my whole eyelid and then the second one goes kind of midway through. And today I'm going to use this MAC palette and I'm going to use that color right there. I got this on sale during a one of their Nordstrom cells, I think like a year ago, maybe more. So I do about six taps in here. And then I just use this brush and I apply it just on the lid. And there is no rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. This is just me doing what it seemed like they were doing when I've gotten my makeup done or what I feel like I've seen other people do on YouTube. So I'm gonna apply it on this lid like this. So I guess while I'm doing this, I can continue to talk about what's going on today. So what's gonna happen today is I need to go to this diversity conference that is from eight to five, but I actually need to leave at four, and I'll tell you why in a second. But I was asked to go to this because um, if you follow me throughout the school year, you know that I was on this African-American task force for my district because um, some of the members of the district that asked me to do it know that minority education is something that I'm really into. It is the core reason of, as to why I became a teacher. Um, and my principal for my old school, hey, if you're watching, <laughs> I know she watches every now and then, she was supposed to go to this meeting, but um, ended up not being able to go, I think is what they told me. So they asked me if I'd like to go, and I said, sure. So I'm gonna go to that from eight to five, or actually eight to four, I'm gonna leave at four. And then I'm going to leave there and I'm going to head out to Anaheim to meet up with some people that are at the Teachers Pay Teachers Conference. Some of them are people from um, people that I've seen or heard of from Instagram or Teachers Pay Teachers, 
but most excitedly for me is a few of them are other teachers on YouTube. And so I'm just excited to meet people that I've watched over the past year or so in person and see what they're like. So right now off the top from YouTube that I know is gonna be there is going to be Megan from Too Cool for Middle School. She's the one that organized all this, so thanks Megan. And Genuine Teaching, who I've watched, and Pocket Full of Primary. So, this is what I've done so far. I don't know if I should close my eyes so you can see it, but I've just put it on kind of like to the, I guess that's the crease bone. I don't know what that is. That's how little I know. Up until there, until I feel like it's enough color but not too much. Then I take this eyeshadow that I believe is called Arena and I use this brush and I'm going to put eyeshadow like right where my arch is at. Um, so anyway, and I do about five taps and a blow. And I like to hold my brow while I do it. I'm going to be doing that. And so that'll be fun just to kind of see what those people like in, are like in real life. And it, I think it's going to be a pretty big group of people. I think right now it's going to be about 26. So I'm looking forward to that. But I know today is going to be a very long day. When my alarm went off at 530, I'm pretty sure my body was in shock. Because during the summer, I typically wake up at 830 sometimes even 9 30 um so but it's good i'm waking up early for a good cause so i usually just put them put it in the crease like that i try and make sure it looks like it's blended in with the other stuff and not just sitting on my eye like layers again i hope no real youtube makeup person is watching this because they're probably thinking this girl has no idea what she's doing but I'm just doing this for you guys. I know a lot of you have asked and I said I would do it. So I figured this would be a fun way to try and do it and experiment. So that's it. That's my eyes now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting on eyeliner. And for that, I've been trying to work with liquid eyeliner. I'm still not really good at it. So I did not invest a lot of money in the liquid eyeliner. So I am just using this liquid eyeliner from Wet n Wild that I got from Target. I believe it cost just a couple of dollars. And my makeup goal is to really learn how to do a winged eye. I don't think that's ever going to happen. So I just take the wand. I pull my eyelid tight because it's easier for me. And I just try and make a very thin line. And I'm probably going to be out of the camera for a second because I have to really get close. But I start at the edge and I just try and make it very thin. I don't really want it to be too thick. Although right now, I don't know. And I just stand back to see if it looks decent. And if it does, I just leave it. And if it doesn't, I just try to work with what I've done and try and make it look a little bit better. So there's my eyes with eyeliner. I do not put eyeliner on my bottom at the bottom of my eye. I've tried that before and for some reason I just feel like it makes my eyes look smaller which is not something that I want so I leave the bottom alone and so I won't be putting any eyeliner down there. Next I curl my eyelashes with this eyelash curler that I've gotten from Target and I've had it for years and I know that I don't do mascara the right way either. I just curl my lashes, hold it there for a second. The mascara that I use is Big Eyes, I think, from Maybelline. This one is meant for your upper lash. This one's meant for your bottom lash, but I also don't put mascara on my bottom lash, so I use both for the upper. So I start with the thicker one. So this is the thicker one for the upper lash. And I know that when I've watched makeup videos on YouTube, you're supposed to go in there and shimmy and shake in there, but I don't. Um, I'm lazy, number one. Number two, I've tried that and I don't really see what is what's different about it but more than anything i don't do it because i'm lazy this is how i've always done it it works for me this way <laughs> so i just keep doing it so i just try and do the first coat really well and then i use the smaller brush which looks like this for the second coat and i just feel like the smaller brush does a good job of really getting in between my lashes so that's why i use it up there and I have to open my eyes wide. And then I'm just gonna repeat with my second eye. 
Okay, so that's my makeup so far. I've done my brows, I've done my eyeshadow, I've put on mascara. So after I do that, I like to put on my foundation and my powder. So I'm gonna do that next. Okay, so for foundation, I use Studio Fix by MAC, and then I bought the pump for it, and then I use this brush. So I just take this foundation, I put two pumps on my hand, one, two, and then I just take my finger and I just put it in different places on my face. I start with three dots on both cheeks. One, two, three. Then I do three dots up near my forehead. I do a dot on my chin, a dot on my lip, then more on my chin, two more here, and then whatever's left, I just put it around my face, primarily on my cheeks, just because I feel like that's where I need it the most. So just keep doing this and while I'm putting on foundation since I'm going to answer the rest of the teaching tag questions later I wanted to talk about a post that I saw on Instagram over the weekend and I don't know who originally posted it but I know that I saw it on um, according to Mr. B's page which is someone that I follow obviously on Instagram and it was basically saying you know, all, all of us out here that are teachers, we're looking at all these teachers buying all these things. And then the post was basically saying, you're out there buying all these things, but are you really making sure? And then I use this brush to <laughs> apply my foundation, sorry. Um, you're out there buying all these things, but are you also making sure that you're spending time preparing to actually teach, getting your lessons together, getting your classroom management together and I just thought it was a really good post even though I have a YouTube channel and I do spend a fair amount of time on Instagram every now and then I do have to remove myself from it especially in the summer because in the summer is when you really start to feel like everybody's out doing all these things and buying all these things and then you start to wonder do I need those things and then you might it may cause you to go out and do things and spend money you don't want to and then at the same time um, that same day, I think, or the next day, a friend of mine that I used to work with who was also going to a different school the school year, her name is Stephanie. I know that she watches and she taught kinder at my school, but now she's going to third, I believe. Um, she was asking me some questions over Instagram and just saying that she was getting a little stressed about her room because she's seen all these Pinterest worthy classrooms on Instagram. And so I was telling her you know just take your time and that's what's hard about things like Instagram and YouTube is you see all these things and then you feel all this pressure to have the perfect classroom and all of that well the truth of the matter is and like that post was saying is you can have the most perfect classroom in the world the cutest classroom anybody's ever seen all the Mo Williams stuffed animals you want all the themed items anyone would ever want to see but if you don't have your lesson plans together and um, your classroom management down, your cute classroom isn't really gonna do much for anybody, including your students. Okay, I just put my foundation on and now I set it with this powder. I have two different powders. This is the lighter powder for where I put the concealer and then this is the darker powder. powder. So if you're a teacher out there who's new or you are feeling the pressure of buying something that you keep seeing a lot of people buy on Instagram or you feel like your classroom needs to be just so just don't worry about it take your time spend what you can spend do what you think is right for you but before you even spend and do all of that make sure you have a good sense of how your classroom is going to run and what's the curriculum that you have to teach and things like that because that's what's really important now I'm saying that and I don't want to sound hypocritical because you guys know that I'm in the process of setting up my classroom and that is a big focus of what I'm doing right now and I've spent some money to try and do that um, a my classroom will stay the same for about three years B the things that you guys aren't seeing me do is that I have spent a lot of time this summer um, looking over math specifically i've made eight chapters now of math videos so i have looked at that i've looked at the reading i've looked at my website i've thought about my classroom management and how that's going to have to change um, i've looked into growth mindset so those are all things that i'm doing that you guys just don't see because i know as exciting as 
it as it is for me to set up a new classroom it's not going to matter if I go to third grade and I don't know what I'm doing and how my classroom's going to run and what changes I need to make. So I'm just saying that to say, you know, we all, even those of us that have been teaching for a while, got to keep things in proper perspective. Um, and you guys know how I feel if you watch my video on financial tips. I don't want to spend too much money on things that are just cutesy and transient. And all that stuff is fun and it's a great, great way to build relationships with students. But I just don't think that that's the only way to build relationships with students. I think relationships are built with students not because you gave them a gift, but because you consistently take time to talk to them, to get to know them, that you take time to get to know their family, talk to their family, that you take time out of your day to just have lighthearted moments with them, and also get on their case when you need to get on their case. I feel like that is what's helped me the most in building relationships with my students and um, their families. So, you know, Instagram is fun, but don't beat yourself up over it if you feel like, well, I'm not keeping up with the Joneses on Instagram. They're buying all these things and I have none of it or I can't afford to do it. You want to do what you can afford. It's not going to be cute to have a cute classroom if you're too broke to eat because you spend all your money in your classroom. So, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put on blush so I have my eyebrows on I've put foundation on and set it with powder then I just put on blush this is a weak area for me I don't use bronzer or highlight I just put on blush and I don't even know if I'm putting the blush on right so I use this one for Mac it is called love thing I smile Do the same thing on the other side. I take a look to see, does it look even? If it does, I put everything away. And the last thing I do is I'm going to put on some lip balm. And then I'll do my hair and I'll be ready to go. So that's really it. That's how I do my makeup. As far as how I store my makeup, it is in this container. Just this caboodle that I've had for years. I also got this at Target. So I just leave some eyeshadows up here. Bigger things are down there. Lipsticks are in there. I don't wear lipstick very often. Brushes and things are on that side. And then that's really it. So had to get my glasses back on. So I am going to now flat iron my hair, put my clothes on, and then um, get ready to go. So I'll talk to you guys a little bit later. Alrighty, I have finished putting on my makeup, obviously gotten dressed. I meant to do a quick outfit of the day, but Turn I didn't get a chance to. Hopefully I'll be able to show you that a little bit later. Um, but I am now in the car headed to this diversity training. And I'm going to answer a few more questions from the I Teach 2 tag, which I didn't mention before, but that was started by Megan from Too Cool for Middle School. And since these have become quite entertaining for me to watch, I'm kind of tempted to try and think of my own tag so you guys might see one for me pretty soon um but anyway the next few questions on her tag are the, the next one i think this is question number six and it is to exit on the right and continue following the c a 210 east i gotta get on the 210 um the next question is take the next exit on the right and continue following the c a 210 east got it um what is our what are my favorite books about teaching? And if I were to be totally honest, and I know this is gonna make me sound like I'm not very professional or I'm not invested in what I do, I don't spend a whole lot of time Please take the reading exit on teaching the books. Um, and I don't have a reason why. Like there are some that I've read, but I know some teachers will read like several over the course of their breaks. And I just don't, A, because- Continue following the road. I'm resting or B I just haven't found one or heard one described to me that I just feel compelled to read um, so I don't know I don't have this long list of books I definitely would recommend even though it was not necessarily written specifically for the profession of teaching I highly recommend if you haven't already thought about doing it reading the energy bus just because it really did help me out quite a bit it just helped me to kind of think about how to deal with negative people in a different way and just kept things in perspective not just for my work life but in my personal life as well um, and then 
there are a couple of books that someone mentioned in their I teach you tag that I do definitely want to check out and um, that person or that channel that I saw it on was I think love and literacy I think it was she's young and I think she teaches in Kansas or something but she mentioned a lot of books that dealt with um, education in urban areas minority education and those when she mentioned those I definitely felt like I wanted to take a look at those and and hear what those were about and I will link those in the description box below because I don't remember the titles right now but I would definitely um, recommend taking a look at those because I always find that topic to be very interesting um, but that's really it I mean I've heard a lot about Ron Clark and I have not read anything about him I really didn't know who he was until maybe the past year or so when I've heard so many people mention him either through Instagram or YouTube and I haven't read any of his yet and I kind of have mixed feelings about it be, about him just based on what I've heard other people describe he some of the things he says I guess is what I'm trying to say I'm not sure if I agree with some of the things that I've heard that he's said but I'm sure he's a wonderful man and I'll keep an open mind the next question is who I believe was my or what are my favorite teacher movies I'm so sorry if these are out of order but I'm driving and I don't want to look at my phone my favorite teacher movies the only two that I can think of that I really liked and never made me cringe because of just the corniness of them or the dr dramatization of them were Lean On Me, which I know a lot of people have made reference to, but I do like that movie. And I really liked Stand and Deliver for the same reason. Like I just felt like it had a good message. I felt like those teachers really were the type of teachers I'd like to be or strive to be. Um, they were the type that just knew that kids just need to have real talk. Like they, they need teachers that are telling them they're doing great when they're doing great, but they also need teachers to tell them to get it together when they need it to get, when they need to get it together. Um, and I think that's important in teaching. And I think that that's what I try and do. Like I love my kids and they know I love them and I will be right there cheering you on when you are doing so great, but I will be right in your face also when I know that you are not doing or working at your full potential. So I love those two movies. On a more lighthearted note, I really like School of Rock, and I really enjoyed Bad Teacher with Cameron Diaz. I really do like watching movies that are based on teaching, but kind of are a little lighthearted about teaching, or sometimes even rude about teaching, where the teachers are saying and doing things that sometimes you wish you could say or do, but you would never say or do that. So those are my favorites. Um, and the next question, I believe, is who was my favorite teacher? And my favorite teacher was from high school. Her name was Mrs. Judson. And um, she was my high school teacher. Freshman year, she was an elective teacher. I believe it was a writing class or a journalism class. And um, she was just very encouraging to me in terms of how I wrote and my abilities in writing. And I think my freshman year, I did well enough in that class to have a few of my articles actually be published in the school newspaper. And then after spending time with her doing that, I decided to apply for yearbook. And I was in yearbook from 10th grade through my senior year. And Mrs. Judson was um, the advisor with for that, for that class. And so if you were in yearbook in high school, you know that you'd have those work nights and you'd spend a lot of time together with the other members on staff as well as, well as your advisor. So by the end of my senior year, I really felt like I had spent a lot of time with Mrs. Judson and got to know her really well. And in return, she got to know me really well. And what I like about her is that, or what I appreciate about her in relation to my life is that she saw something in me at a time where I didn't see it. So she always thought very highly of me and would say things that let me know that like she would compliment me on my ability to write or my abilities in yearbook or my leadership capabilities or who I was as a person and um, sometimes I just remember she would say all these nice things to me and I thought I mean I don't, really don't know why she thinks I'm so great I'm just I'm not anything special not that I felt bad about myself but I just thought I don't know why she's so nice to me and high school graduation came and I remember taking a picture with her and I still have it 
and I think at the end of the year, whether she gave it to me at graduation or before graduation, she gave me a card and just wrote me this really encouraging note about my future, and it was very heartfelt. Like, I could tell this wasn't a note that she just wrote to every student. Like, this was a note from her heart and really encouraged me about my future and the type of woman I was going to grow up to be and the type of woman I currently was, and it was very effective. Like, I just remember reading that thinking, like, wow, she really thinks highly of me, and it was just... I just think she has a very pivotal role in my life. I think that some of the confidence that I have in some of the things that I do right now are a direct result of her saying some of the things that she said to me. So she still teaches now and I've seen her on occasion. And I, the last time I saw her, I really made a point to tell her that. Like I never verbalized that to her because I don't think I realized the effect she had on me yet until I was older. Um, so yes. Love Mrs. Judson. I'm so thankful for her, and um, that's my favorite teacher. So I'm going to pause with those questions for right now. Again, I apologize if I'm answering these all out of order and ruining the integrity of this tag, but I'm going to focus on my driving, make sure I get to where I need to be safely. I will try and check in throughout the uh, conference because the topic should be pretty interesting, and then I'll definitely check in with you guys later on today as I head to this little meetup for the TPT conference. So, talk to you guys later. Alrighty, it is 5.07. I am on the lovely 91 freeway headed to Disneyland, but it's fine. This traffic, I can handle it because I'm on my way to meet up with um, some different people from YouTube and some different people from Teachers Pay Teachers, so I'm really looking forward to that. But I wanted to jump on at this point to kind of just de debrief about the diversity training that I um, just came from. It was really, really good. Um, there were, I think, three three um, speakers that just touched on different aspects of equity in education, um, the different issues that educators face in making sure education is equitable for all, all groups of people, regardless of race, gender, um, sexual orientation, etc. And I just really enjoyed it because I'm just really into that topic and it really gave me the motivation to say, you know what, LaTanya, you need to just suck it up, go ahead and um, get your administrative credential because if this is something you're really passionate about and you want to help to make a difference, you might have to put yourself in that leadership role in order to do it and you can't do that without your administrative credential. So it was really good. I left about 40 minutes early just to try and make sure that I get down to Disneyland in time. I need to be there by 6 o'clock. It is now 5.10 and I am, according to my car, scheduled to get there at 5.40. So, fingers crossed that all of that works out. Um, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and answer the next two questions from the I Teach 2 tag. So, the next question, I've lost track of what number, I think it's question number nine, um, is who are your favorite YouTubers, teacher YouTubers, or teachers on Snapchat or Instagram, etc. I really only um, go to YouTube and Instagram. I don't have a Snapchat account. I've never even gone on to Snapchat myself to see what's going on there. Um, but as far as my favorite YouTubers, I definitely enjoy watching Miss May. She has been very supportive of me and my channel. She's very positive, just has a happy, peppy personality. And sometimes I wish I could be more like her because she just, I think, exudes positivity. And I don't know that I always do that. So I definitely like her channel. Um, I, of course, enjoy watching Megan from Too Cool for Middle School. She's probably one of the first teachers on Instagram I started watching. And what I like about her channel is there's a certain element of realness in her channel when she speaks. I just feel like it's someone that I would hang out with. And hopefully after today, meeting her in person, I continue to feel that way. And, you know, maybe we can do more things in the future. Um, and especially as a fifth grade teacher, I liked watching her channel because she spoke about working with older kids and some of the stuff that she mentioned and suggested were things that I could have easily made work for me as a fifth grade teacher. Um, I do like Real Rap with the Reynolds. I like the fact, I like his channel primarily because he's a male. And I love the fact that there's more male teachers coming out because I think that's a very important voice out there that needs to be heard. I definitely like his approach to his channel and his personality. And um, that's probably my top three if I had to pick who I was going to watch and spend some time 
looking over their channel, but I do watch a lot of other ones. I do watch uh, Pocket Full of Primary and The Letter Classroom and Tina Beitler. And what I think is each of those channels just offer something different. They all have very different styles in terms of their teaching and their communicating and how they come across on YouTube. And from each of them, I will pick up something here and then here or there. And that is primarily why I watch other teachers on YouTube. As far as Instagram, I honestly don't have specific favorites, specific accounts that I'm just deep into. I just like the fact that on Instagram, I can follow a ton of teachers, get a quick snapshot of something that they're doing and save that image or save the link or go to their TPT store or even ask them a question if necessary. Um, so Instagram for me is just a lot of visual ideas that I may not have otherwise had. And then Snapchat and all that I don't do. So I don't have any favorite Snapchatters. And then the final question is, what is my top classroom management strategy, I think is what it was. And I don't, honestly, my top classroom management strategy is just to remember that your kids are human beings. And I don't know if some of you will consider that a classroom man management strategy or that's what you're looking for with that question. But I really think at the most basic level, if you remember that with your kids, then everything else falls into place. So when they do something really well, remember that they're human and appreciate them and tell them how proud you are of them and all of that. If they find themselves in a bit of a bind, treat them like they're human meaning like give them the chance to explain themselves give them the, the opportunity for you to listen listen with an open mind treat them how you would want to be treated even though they're a child and you're an adult um, talk to them don't be condescending to them all of those things help kids to want to behave in your class help them to want to express themselves when they find themselves in one of those situations where you might be disciplining them it really does help build a better classroom community when the kids realize that I am treating them as human beings and individuals and not holding grudges or not going off of what other teachers have told me about them and it just goes so far and um, I know that to be the case because some of the students that have come back to me after they've gone to middle school whatever those are the kinds of things that they mention that they appreciated those are the things that make them feel like I cared and because they felt like I cared they cared so that would be my top classroom management strategy so this was a really big experiment for me to do this I teach two tag in the middle of doing makeup and driving from point A to point B and I hope it really turns out well I am still making good time on the 91 I am currently driving traffic free so knock on wood if I had it that that doesn't change and I will definitely be pulling out my camera when I get to dinner we are going to be meeting up at the ESPN zone and um, I definitely want to share some of that so I'm gonna keep driving and I'll talk to you guys later so I made it just in time it is probably six o'clock on the dot I am headed to the ESPN zone to meet some new people, hopefully make some new friends. I'm really excited to put a personality to some of the faces I've seen just on YouTube. So I'm looking forward to it. Fun. So, yay. So, so nice to meet her. Say hi, everybody. <laughs> Bye. 
Bye. Don't forget to read the picture book. Yes, it's okay. Okay. Jess, one more thing to say. What do you have to say? Open the magic and picture books are my jam. Yeah. It's been so fun getting to know you and talk to you in person. Seriously. And like, the sweetest girl Aww. I've ever met. Like, and to and find out that our struggles are the same. Yeah. So, so I just want to say thank you for coming. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and binge watch like all the videos you. now. <laughs> Bye guys. We are wrapping up our evening. How do you think it went? It was amazing. It was amazing. Like, it's so cool meeting these people yeah. in real life and they're like just as amazing as you see them in their vlog. Like, yeah. oh my god, this is so Are you? <laughs> She's vlogging as well. I'm hijacking <laughs> your vlog. We gotta do one over here. Um, oh let's vlog each other vlogging. Yes. <laughs> Vlogging each playing. other, vlogging, because you can't have any, it, the moment doesn't matter if it's not vlogged. And then our friends across the way are vlogging us, vlogging. You have fun tonight. I had so much fun. Me too. Like, we're just the next date over, but like, I feel like this should happen tomorrow. I know, I feel like we've been friends for a long time. I know, like, I watch it all the time, and I'm like, my sister always said, you need to watch it. And if you guys are on my channel, you're not Oh wait, I think we're getting pictures. Okay, bye. We'll be right back, we'll be right back. Michelle has never been here before. <laughs> have you, Michelle? I haven't. <laughs> this is her, uh, magical, her first time. My, my wallet is already crying. Ooh. <laughs> my Tory Burch perfume. Very nice. This is my birthday present. Oh, birthday. happy birthday. And this stuff is like my fave. This uh, Smith's Minted Rose Lip Balm. Ooh. It's like $6. It's like the cheapest thing I can get. At Sephora. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we oh, there's Michelle. Michelle was overwhelmed. She's gonna, she's gonna come back another day. <laughs> Make a purchase. I just want to go by the I'm just trying to be good because I spent a lot of money on my classroom, so I'm not making any purchases. So. It is now, I don't know, Genesis is tired. Um, it is now after midnight. I've been home for probably about um, 40, 45 minutes and just came home, relaxed a little bit and went through Instagram and all of that. And I just wanted to wrap up the day. This day has been so long and so filled with information and excitement that I don't mind how tired I am. So, um, I don't know. It was just a really good day. I was kind of, I think I said earlier today, I was just not sure how this day was going to go because 
I knew I was going to be up early and probably out late, but I really enjoyed every minute of it to the point where I didn't realize I was tired, so I had time to sit down. But I just had so much fun connecting with people and pushing myself to go out and meet people that I don't, I know, but I don't know. You know, when you follow people on Instagram or YouTube, you know them, but then you ask yourself, do you really know them? And then even interacting with teachers that um, primarily work through Teachers Pay Teachers as a form of sharing what their professional life is like was so much fun. And I just, I think being around um, Megan from Too Cool for Middle School and Michelle from Pocket Full of Primary and Jennifer from Genuine Teaching just really, um, inspired me to keep going with my channel not that I was going to stop it but I wasn't really sure what direction it was going to take so um you guys know that I've said I'm not going to vlog every single day of the school year like I did last year and I certainly don't know that I'll be uploading on such a consistent basis with the changes that are coming for me professionally and school-wise next year but I'm definitely going to keep the channel and I just feel like there's so much more that I can do with it in terms of sharing what teaching life is like and what's important to me as a teacher and the things that I want to share that um, I think it's amazing and I feel like the community on YouTube of teachers it's either grown in the past year or I've just become aware that there's more teachers out there and I just hope that it continues to stay supportive um, and it, it, I don't know like it just was it, was it was just a good experience to talk to people that are passionate about the same thing you are professionally and then just doing this whole YouTube thing just for the fun of it and through the desire to share and just talking about ways that we can expand ourselves and push ourselves and um, offer more things for you guys to look at. So it was so much fun and I promise you if you are wondering, everyone that I met, um, either, whether they were teachers that I've seen on Instagram or YouTube were just as nice as I hoped they were. There were some faces I definitely saw and remember or, or recognized. Um, Ramona recommends is someone that I just know from Teachers Pay te or not Teachers Pay Teachers, Instagram. Um, because I follow her because I know that she taught teaches fifth grade and is really focused on picture books and she was just down to earth and fun. Um, all the people from YouTube were super, super nice. I met someone called the Teacher Crafter who's on Instagram. She was really sweet, made all the cute craft things that you guys saw. I hope I got a clip. Um, Lisa underscore teacher, I met her, really sweet. And Mrs. Rod Rocks, who's also on Teachers Pay Teachers. And they were really sweet and it was just so much fun. Oh and the sweetest teacher. Um, I almost forgot her because she had to leave early. But everyone was just so, so nice. I really cannot stress that enough. So that is it. I have no idea what this vlog is gonna look like because I know that I took a lot of just random footage but I can't wait to put it together and see what it's like. But in the meantime, I am definitely going to go to bed now after a, a shower, of course. Latanya never goes to bed without a shower. I'm gonna go to bed. I don't know if you can you can see Genesis back there. She's already in the bed. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna close the vlog out here for the day. Um, tomorrow, what am I doing? Oh, tomorrow I'm meeting up with a student and her fam. Well, really, a former student, her younger sister and her mom, and um, continue to get myself ready for the school year. So. Until the next vlog, I'll see you guys very, very soon. I don't have anything else to say, so good night.